one of nine children brought up in East London. Daniel claims that he's been able to do massive calculations since he was only four. I had um, quite a uh, severe seizure as a very small child. A series of seizures and a diagnosis of, of epilepsy was made. His childhood fits seem to have changed something in his brain. It's really from that time that I started to, to see pictures in my mind, images started to, to form. Intuitively, Daniel also began to perceive the patterns within numbers. Cases like this are extremely rare, yet there are others who have also suffered injury to the brain, only to emerge with a startling and often similar kind of talent. Orlando Serrell was just 10 when he received his fateful blow. Me and a couple of friends were playing baseball. I was a batter. When I ran to first base, the guy threw the ball, and the ball hit me on my left side of the head. It was a hard hit, right up in this area, right up in there. And I just laid on the ground. I didn't go to the hospital, didn't get no treatment or nothing. To his surprise, Orlando soon discovered that he could name the day of the week and recall the weather for any date since his accident. February 17, 1980 was on a Sunday. It was sunshine and clear skies. June 3rd, 1985 was on a Monday. It was hot. March 28th, 1990 was on a Wednesday. Yeah, sunshine and clear skies. Sunday was hot. January 2nd, 1985 was on a Wednesday. March 23rd, 1992 was on a Wednesday. March 24th, 1989 was on a Sunday. Cloudy. I can't explain it. It just pops right into my head. Somehow, the circuitry in his brain is computing calendar dates. What part of my brain is doing this, I don't know. Both Orlando and Daniel seem to possess special powers of perception, as well as enhanced memory. There are only a handful of people like this worldwide, and they are known to science as savants. The concept was popularized by the hit movie Rain Man, where actor Dustin Hoffman plays the part of a brilliantly gifted misfit. Like Rain Man, most savants lack normal social skills, often because they're autistic. In fact, the link with autism is so strong that we wondered whether it could be a factor in Daniel's abilities. Cambridge neuroscientist Professor Simon Baron Cohen, an expert on autism, will be making a careful assessment. Autism is a spectrum of medical conditions where people have a lot of difficulty in forming social relationships and in putting themselves into other people's shoes to imagine other people's thoughts and feelings. But it's also where the individual develops very strong, narrow interests, obsessions, and likes to do things in a very repetitive way. So it's a mix of ability and disability. 25-year-old Daniel seems to have lots of ability, yet no obvious disability. Today he's joined by his mother, who will help to reconstruct Daniel's childhood. Amongst your other children, are any of them also... Her memories, it turns out, are still vivid. If you had Daniel as a first child, you'd never have another child because the constant crying... <laughs> up until ne nearly the age of two, he was right. a real handful. He would just cry. Constantly. We took to even swinging him in a, a blanket. His dad would be at one end of the blanket, I would have the other, and we, we resorted to that out mm. of desperation. Did he like that? Yes, that soothed him. Did he like the sort of repetitive movements? Yes, yes, right. that soothed him. The repetition seemed to soothe him, and that's again a very sort of classic autistic characteristic. I mean, if you, if you think back to the days when he was at primary school, were the, were the teachers at all um, concerned about him, or did they talk about him as if he was different in some way? You know, what would happen during break time? I think I would count stones, I remember counting stones, and also there was a, is it called hopscotch? Yeah. So I would count the numbers on the mm. hopscotch. This was what interested me, so this is what I would do, and nothing right. else mattered. I knew he didn't integrate that well. I do remember you walking around the playground and looking at, up at the trees. 
I'd walk around the trees and uh, look at the leaves, look at the patterns on the, right. the leaves and the bark. It seems to have the complexity within yeah. its shapes and yeah, textures definitely. that reminds me of yeah. numbers. Right. Numbers for me have always been it's like the, the most real thing for me. From the time I was about five, I've almost looked through numbers. Numbers have been my lens, the way that I've looked at the world around me. So I'll always count things. So I'll look at something and say, that looks like 131, for example, or that looks like 52. And just always thinking that this is how everyone else experiences numbers, you know, that, that this is a normal thing. He got most pleasure out of just taking the maths books home and lying on his bedroom floor alone, going as far as he could with uh, numerical problems and just understanding numbers, feeling much more comfortable in a world of, of numbers than people. Daniel's obsession with maths is at least part of the explanation for his special ability with numbers. The things that he always felt were his friends. Because I was so different, mm -hmm. The children who would be bullies didn't know what to do with me, you know, they didn't know how to tease me, so they just 